In the world of animation, one name stands above all. A dreamer who became a legend and left behind a legacy that's much more than just cartoons and theme parks. This is the story of Walt Disney. We'll trace his journey from a modest neighborhood to the glory of Hollywood. Discover how he overcame setbacks like the loss of his first major character, Oswald, to birth the icon that is Mickey Mouse. This tale is a testament to the power of ambition, imagination, and the magic that unfolds when you dare to dream. How did a boy from a modest neighborhood in Chicago set the stage for a future that would forever change the world of animation? Our story begins in the heart of Chicago, in a quaint neighborhood known as Hermosa, where Walt Disney was born on December 5, 1901. In 1906, a young Walt, only four years old, moved with his family into Marceline, Missouri. It was a simple beginning, a young boy, a retired doctor's horse, and a handful of crayons and watercolors. Walt's talent for drawing emerged as he sketched his surroundings, deeply influenced by the cartoons in the Appeal to Reason newspaper that his father subscribed to. As the pages of Walt's life turned, 1911 marked a new chapter when his family moved to Kansas City. Here at Benton Grammar School, Walt met a friend, Walter Pfeiffer. The Pfeiffers were avid theatergoers, introducing Walt to the mesmerizing world of motion pictures. Amidst his newfound interests, Walt's life was not without its trials. His father, Elias, had taken on a newspaper delivery route for the Kansas City Star and Kansas City Times, and Walt, along with his brother Roy, were the early risers delivering newspapers before the sun peaked over the horizon. This exhausting routine often led to Walt dozing off in class, his grades suffering as a consequence. But how did a teenager's patriotic cartoon signal the rise of a future animation legend? The answer might surprise you. In 1917, Walt Disney's life took a turn back to Chicago, where his father Elias invested in the Ozell Company, a local jelly producer. Here, Walt enrolled at McKinley High School, showcasing his talents as a cartoonist for the school newspaper. His drawings, often patriotic and themed around World War I, were a reflection of the times. As the war raged in Europe, a young Walt, driven by a sense of duty, attempted to join the United States Army. Rejected for being underage, he didn't give up. Instead, he altered his birth certificate and joined the Red Cross as an ambulance driver. Upon returning to Kansas City in 1919, Walt joined the Pessman Rubin Commercial Art Studio as an apprentice. It was here that he met Oob Eworks, a fellow artist who would become a significant figure in his life. However, their time at the studio was short-lived. In 1920, they found themselves out of work and decided to start their own business, Eworks Disney Commercial Artists. The venture was brief and led Walt to join the Kansas City Film Ad Company, where Eworks soon followed. Could a young animator's gamble in Hollywood set the stage for an entertainment empire? At the Kansas City Film Ad Company, Walt was introduced to the world of animation. Initially working with cutout animation, he quickly realized the potential of cell animation. Fueled by this new passion, Walt, along with his colleague Fred Harmon, started producing short cartoons, known as laughograms, for the local Newman Theater. The success of Laughograms led Walt to establish Laughogram Studio in May 1921. He brought on more talent, including Hugh Harmon, Rudolph Ising, and Eworks. Despite the initial buzz, the studio struggled financially. In a bold move, Walt started the production of Alice's Wonderland, a film that blended live action with animation. Virginia Davis starred in this innovative project. Sadly, the completion of this ambitious film came too late to save Laughogram Studio from bankruptcy in 1923. In July 1923, a 21-year-old Walt Disney set his sights on Hollywood. Though New York was the epicenter of the cartoon industry, Los Angeles had a personal appeal. His brother Roy was there, recovering from tuberculosis. However, fate had a different plan for him. Despite initial challenges in selling his Alice's Wonderland film, a ray of hope emerged from New York film distributor Margaret J. Winkler. Winkler, facing the loss of rights to popular cartoons like Out of the Inkwell and Felix the Cat, saw potential in Disney's work. In October 1923, they inked a deal for six Alice comedies, with options for more. This moment led to the formation of the Disney Brothers studio with Roy, which later evolved into the Walt Disney Company. They convinced Virginia Davis, the star of Alice's Wonderland, and her family to move to Hollywood, offering $100 a month. In July 1924, Walt brought Oob Eworks from Kansas City to Hollywood. 
In a dramatic turn of events, in 1928, Disney's negotiations with Mintz for a better deal for the Oswald series backfired. Mintz, controlling the rights to Oswald, reduced payments and took most of Disney's staff, except Eworks, to his side. Faced with this betrayal and loss, Disney refused Mintz's ultimatum, resulting in the loss of Oswald but setting the stage for a remarkable comeback. And then a twist of fate, the creation of an icon. How did a lost character lead to the birth of Mickey Mouse? The story unfolds next. Disney and Eworks embarked on a creating a new character, Mickey Mouse. Mickey, inspired by a pet mouse Disney had in his Laughagram studio, was initially named Mortimer. However, Lillian Disney, Walt's wife, proposed the name Mickey. In May 1928, Mickey Mouse made his debut in a test screening of Plane Crazy, followed by The Gallop and Gaucho. Despite their innovative animation, both shorts initially failed to secure a distributor. What innovation would transform a simple cartoon into a cultural phenomenon? The game changer came with Steamboat Willie, the third Mickey Mouse short. Inspired by the 1927 hit The Jazz Singer, Disney incorporated synchronized sound, a revolutionary step that transformed Steamboat Willie into the first post-produced sound cartoon. With Steamboat Willie changing the game, Disney was on the brink of something even bigger. Up next, we uncover how a risky idea turned into a legendary success story. Disney struck a deal with Pat Powers, a former Universal Pictures executive, to use the Powers Cinephone recording system. Powers also became the distributor for Disney's early sound cartoons, which rapidly gained popularity. Despite the success of Mickey Mouse and the Silly Symphonies, Disney and his brother Roy felt shortchanged by Powers in terms of profit sharing. In an attempt to cut costs, Disney encouraged Eworks to streamline the animation process. But when Disney requested a higher payment from Powers, the partnership soured. Powers managed to persuade Oob Eworks to leave Disney and join him. This move, coupled with the departure of Carl Stalling, who thought Disney's studio might not survive these changes, marked a challenging period for Disney. The Disney studio bounced back by signing a contract with Columbia Pictures to distribute Mickey Mouse cartoons both in the US and internationally. New characters were introduced, Pluto in 1930, Goofy in 1932, and Donald Duck in 1934. Disney also received an honorary award for the creation of Mickey Mouse. Disney also invested in a dedicated story department, separate from the animators, to craft the plots of Disney films. By 1934, Disney's creative aspirations outgrew the formulaic cartoon shorts. He envisioned something remarkable, a feature-length cartoon. What happens when a project is labeled as Disney's folly? We're about to dive into a risk that could make or break the Disney legacy. The studio started the four-year production of Snow White and the Seven Dwarves based on the classic fairy tale. Skeptics in the industry dubbed it Disney's Folly, predicting financial ruin. The production, the first animated feature in full color and sound, cost $1.5 million, three times the initial budget. To achieve realism in animation, Disney sent his animators to study at the Chouinard Art Institute. He also brought live animals and actors into the studio for his team to study real-life movements. Snow White made its debut in December 1937 and quickly became a huge hit. Audiences and critics loved it. By 1938, it was the most popular movie of the year. By May 1939, it had earned a massive $6.5 million, more than any other sound movie up to that point. This achievement was so significant that Disney received a special Academy Award, one regular-sized Oscar and seven smaller ones. Despite the success of Snow White, the releases of Pinocchio and Fantasia in 1940 underperformed, partly due to the onset of World War II. By February 1941, the studio faced a severe financial crisis. In response, Disney held its first public stock offering in 1940 and implemented salary cuts. However, these measures led to a five-week animator strike in 1941. During the negotiations, Disney undertook a goodwill trip to South America, avoiding the studio during the dispute. The strike and financial challenges led to several animators leaving, permanently affecting Disney's relationship with his staff. In the early 1950s, Disney reignited the magic of animation with Cinderella, his first animated feature in eight years. 
The movie was a hit, earning nearly $8 million in its first year on a budget of $2.2 million. During this period, Disney's focus shifted towards live-action films, with Treasure Island and the story of Robin Hood and his Merry Men. How did Walt Disney's dream of a family-friendly park become a reality and redefine entertainment? Disney had long dreamed of creating a theme park. Inspired by his visits to Griffith Park and Tivoli Gardens in Copenhagen, he envisioned a clean, family-friendly park. Initially planning to build in Burbank, he eventually found a larger, suitable site in Anaheim. Funding the project initially with his own money, Disney formed WED Enterprises, now Walt Disney Imagineering and gathered a team of Imagineers. With additional financial backing from ABC and other investors, construction began in 1954. And Disneyland opened in July 1955. The park, featuring themed lands and the iconic Disneyland Railroad, drew millions of visitors in its first year. In his final years, Disney was heavily involved in film projects like The Jungle Book, The Happiest Millionaire, and the animated short Winnie the Pooh and the Blustery Day. A lifelong smoker, Disney was diagnosed with lung cancer in November 1966. He passed away on December 15, 1966, at age 65, and was cremated, with his ashes buried at Forest Lawn Memorial Park in Glendale, California. In 2009, the Walt Disney Family Museum, founded by Disney's daughter Diane and her son, opened in San Francisco to celebrate Disney's life and achievements. By 2014, Disney theme parks globally welcomed approximately 134 million visitors. Walt Disney's journey from a simple artist to a global icon highlights the importance of resilience and creativity. Despite early setbacks, he created Mickey Mouse and pioneered sound animation, leaving a lasting impact on entertainment with his films and Disneyland.